Good morning and welcome to KBC News Check and as you can see on your screen the interviews the IEBC commissioners interviews are currently underway and thanks for joining us my name is Ben Troy Njue and Susan Thuku will be our sign language and is still our sign language interpreter for this exercise and of course the Elizabeth Muli led commission is tasked with uh, looking for four commissioners and the interviews are in their last week of course they were supposed to end tomorrow but due to yesterday's uh, Idul Atha they will be concluded on Friday and here we'll be trying to put into focus or trying to break down some of the things that have come up when it comes to the IEBC interviews kindly be part of this conversation at KBC Channel 1 at Ben Troy of course we are also live on all our social media platform of course your questions suggestions or even where you're watching us from are highly welcome well without further ado let me welcome my guest today his name is Churchill Saoke, who happens to be a leadership and governance expert and also a lecturer at the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology Churchill it's been a while, but it's good to have you back. Thank you so much. Yes. It's, it's really nice, and uh, it's great to be here in such a revamped KBC. Thank you. KBC. Thank you. Uh, well, you also have been uh, following on the IEBC, and of course we had... Um, just we had the the the, the, um, the by-elections that we had but uh, trying to put some things to focus some of the things that have been brought up by these guys can be in my words and my view can be used to make IEBC even far much better we had Saeed um, Saeed Hame Saeed who is currently on the bench they have brought about the issue of counterproductivity when it comes to IEBC why is that they're talking about we are only always bashing IEBC there's no one time that you will give credit where it's due. And of course, that erodes the confidence that Kenyans have mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, IABC. Mm -hmm. Well, well that, is, that is expected. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that it is important to admit that in any political process, mm -hmm. the politics is about winning public opinion. And, and, and the politicians are good at winning public opinion. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is therefore incumbent of institutions like, uh, like the Independent Electoral and Boundary Commission to always ensure that whatever they do is, 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 is perfect beyond, in terms of evidence-based perfection. Mm -hmm. Because you see, the politicians will make noise to influence public and sway public perception. But sometimes, whatever they say are never factual. They mm -hmm. cannot, they are never evidence-based. So the only point where the, the institutions like IEBC can beat politicians is to have processes that can be, that are evidence-based and are factual. So that when they find themselves in scenarios where they have to challenge one another with the politicians, the politicians can never have their way. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, let's touch on the figures. In 2017, the country spent about 49 billion in the polls, which was billed one of the most expensive, not only in Kenya, but in the region and the world as well, compared to the region. But um, a lot of that money went into printing of uh, the ballot papers. One of the commissioners, or one of the interviewees, sorry, talked about if we have to trust our institutions, if we trust our institutions uh, that we can even have the ballot papers printed right here at home and of course it's going to bring down the cost the 49 billion could have been brought down if we did that locally um, absolutely it, it's 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 about value systems mm -hmm. and i think that it is it is a good intention a when you look at it I, ideally mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a good intention if you have institutions that are able to stick to their values and, and, and you know, provide it to the country mm -hmm. based on the values that they believe in, you know, mm -hmm. then that is possible. Mm -hmm. But in scenarios where you have possibilities of infiltration of processes by interest groups, mm -hmm. then that particular approach is likely to bring 
uh, lack of trust, public trust on, on, on the institutions of IBC. So mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is a good idea to find uh, possibilities of printing ballot papers in the country. Mm -hmm. The only problem is, do we have the value credibility mm -hmm. to do that? To the extent that if I am in the commission and a politician has come to me with 200 million shillings to find a way of adding uh, more ballot papers, mm -hmm. I can't do it. So it is, it, is a, it is good intention, it is a good proposal, but it is about inward thinking as to whether our hearts mm -hmm. and our minds can be able to accommodate. Yes, if we have issues proposal. in trusting IBC, <laughs> and of course we know very well when anything national comes about, it is infiltrated. So if we have trust in our institution, you think this can work? Absolutely. If we have trust in our institutions, then we will not just even print ballot papers for our country. Mm -hmm. We will even print ballot papers for the rest of the region. Mm -hmm. And we will actually be now exporting. We will be exporting ballot papers and it will be in income generating for our country. Uh -huh. Yes. Of course, all countries, including Kenya, we have digitized the matters, polls, and especially when it came to 2013, uh, general polls and 2017. But we always have an issue when it comes to transmission of results. So looking at Kiamba and Muguga, they are talking about uh, somewhere, not, not the voting exercise itself, but when it comes to transmission yeah. of results. We had the Juja uh, by election that we experienced yes. the same same yes. problems and of course parties political parties talking about we have um, an issue when it comes to transmission of resort and is the time that we are doing the digitization perhaps it's it's good that we go back to our old paperwork it's 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 still a, ch a chicken and egg thing mm -hmm. because when you look at when you look at the, uh, the managing an election especially the current political architecture mm -hmm. where you have so many candidates at any particular time mm -hmm. the, the the challenges that exists with the transmission just not lies sometimes we look at the commission as too much but mm -hmm. the architecture of the IBC from the grassroots has a key role to play in ensuring an integrity of the electoral process because for example if you look at Muguga Muguga may have Muguga and Kiamba and these by elections mm -hmm. we might not really talk much about them as, as is now because there was a lot of focus you know being that it was the only election mm -hmm. but when you are considering uh, a general election mm -hmm. and you have the chairman of the electoral commission and the few commissioners mm -hmm. having to oversee all the rest of the country they can't do it alone there are specific people who have been given the responsibilities to ensure that the processes are as per stipulated in the law now that is where the problem lies and you have stated it very nicely mm -hmm. that in the process of managing the election down there that is where some of these things happen some ballot papers are stuffed mm -hmm. and politicians also create chaos mm -hmm. and bring in stuffing ballot papers and they are counted in between mm -hmm. so in the process what you receive is not necessarily a reflection of what the voters of, of the voters mm -hmm. so in the ultimate end you then realize that this thing is not just about the commission it's it's about the whole the whole system that needs to be looked at and i think maybe maybe some point we are always too unfair to the commissioners maybe mm -hmm. but anyway they have a, a a responsibility to take leadership the county electoral returning officers and the ward the constituency those people down there some of them have participated very key and effectively in the manufacturing of the electoral process and maybe the digital the digitalization process mm -hmm. could be something that could be could be of help in trans, in terms of managing these elections in the hope that my 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 good students or some of whom we over over teach will not be able to hack into the systems <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed <laughs> yeah and, and still on the the transmission and the technology used there have been of course recommendations and some some have even quoted that we have the capacity and capability to even have technology to vote from our own homes of course uh, some may talk about this far-fetched and we are not there yet and of course gonna bring a lot of problems looking at the percentages of voter uh, turnout 
is always we, we, we're seeing less than 50 percent perhaps this can boost that yes absolutely i think we have to admit that uh, this is not the time for us to go backwards Mm -hmm. Remember, there are instances in this country and in this region where ballot papers used to be found in sugarcane plantations yes. and tea plantations. Uh -huh. I mean, that's not where we want to go. Mm -hmm. We are in an era of information age and technology is continually taking up everything. And we must admit to this reality. So it is about us finding ways of creating buffer buffer systems you know bulletproof systems that cannot be able to that, that that cannot be penetrated by you know hackers or or other other interest groups it's about creating systems that are buffer proof so, you know they are they are, they are, they, are, they are you know nobody can be able to hack them so that in the process when we build that trust just the same way mm -hmm. you trust the bank with your money mm -hmm. And when you do digital or uh, i-banking, internet banking or mobile banking, you trust that when you use that, that code or when you use those codes in your phone or in your computer, that is the information you feed in there is exactly the system, what is going to be accepted in the system. Mm -hmm. And it is not going to have an impact in your bank balance. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if we have trusted banks with our money, mm -hmm. Why can't we trust, why can't IBC create a system mm -hmm. that we can make them trust with, with our votes? Uh -huh. And uh, talking about trust, uh, looking at the timelines that IEBC of late has been exhibiting, looking at even the, the Juja, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, making references because these are the, the latest by-elections by that IBC has carried out, and even the, the, the Muguga and um, uh, the Kiamba. 15 hours down the line, we still haven't received the, 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 who is the winner, who has been uh, elected as the new leader. 15 hours is just an MCA and a member of parliament. And we are headed to the national polls where we'll be having six every day in 47 counties, hundreds and thousands of wards. Don't you think that will exhibit a problem? I Absolutely. And I think that this is the point where we really have to rethink of how politicians, the mm -hmm. entry of politicians into the electoral process, especially at the point where mm -hmm. the, you know, the tallying and the voter, the voter counting is being done. Because you find that some of these delays are actually orchestrated not, not by the IBC themselves, mm -hmm. but by the politicians wanting to influence the results of the elections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are instances where you have had politicians storming polling stations, yes, telling centers, so that you know, they ensure that their persons win. Mm -hmm. And you know, in the long run, you create confusion in the electoral process. Mm -hmm. The bad news is that when such a thing succeeds, the people who end up getting the, the, the stones, the stones are being thrown more at the IBC. Yet in real sense, the politicians have got a huge responsibility in ensuring that elections are manned well and the right persons are declared winners. Yeah. Yes. And uh, something that you had mentioned earlier when it comes to making sure that everything IEBC um, announces is airtight and uh, of course cannot be tampered with but looking at a couple of days ago we had uh, a young man who was arrested and incidentally he was able to hack into the IEBC uh, servers and was able to collect a lot of data for for, for so many people in uh, in a constituency that brings a very big problem looking at the general polls that we are headed to in 2017 we had the same same allegations why is it taking so long to actually foolproof and and now that is, and now that and of course you come from one of the best institu institutions when it comes to technology i know and we are not we are not we are not uh, we are not saying it <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> now uh -huh. and that is now where the problem mm -hmm. lies and this is now the biggest challenge that the commissioners now have to work on mm -hmm. How do they come up with such a proof system that cannot be tampered with? Because, you know, we must admit, and th this is the reality, and I, I will continue to say this, the politicians will always do what they do best. Every politician goes into an election because he wants to win. Mm -hmm. 
nobody goes into an election because he does not want to win mm -hmm. and the IBC has a responsibility to ensure that the right person wins so if we still have issues around you know data being able you know people are able to get data from their data management systems it, it's a big blow to the to, to the institution because you see it then makes people to lack credence in the institution it makes people to lack uh, trust with the system and you know like now what is doing around across this country is that you know who votes is not the is, is not the person who votes is not the one who determines election but the person who counts you know mm -hmm. that is very dangerous for democracy mm -hmm. it's extremely extremely dangerous for democracy mm -hmm. and in the long run if we go that direction we will get to points where we get to what we call voter apathy mm -hmm. people will no longer want to go vote and systems will determine who has voted mm -hmm. then as time continues we get to what is called a closed system mm -hmm. where the democratic space continues to close up and the gains and the freedoms of people that people have earned for many years of determining their their leaders mm -hmm. will be grasped and taken up by a specific few or systems or bureaucrats and then you cannot be able to determine who becomes your leader mm -hmm. as time goes by mm -hmm. you will most likely end up realizing that we are back into an, 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 an autocracy yes and of course uh, talking about the challenges facing IBC the first time I voted was in the 2002 uh, polls uh, when the rainbow coalition uh, took over the reins of power and uh, the Moise government at the time was accused of using state machinery uh, in the in the in the election and and the campaigns the same same replicated in uh, 2007 2013 there were the same allegations uh, closer the muguga and the 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 the, the, the kiamba ones there were allegations of, of the state using its machinery including its officials and officers including chiefs and uh, those are just allegations but why is it that we are always talking about those allegations should ibc perhaps be given more mandate uh, to investigate to investigate these allegations absolutely because, uh, 20, uh, 2017 was the same script that is that is the desire that is what is enshrined that is what is the when you look at the spirit of the law mm -hmm. that is what the law hopes to achieve by creating an independent that's why there is that part word independent mm -hmm. but you know the challenge with that independent part mm -hmm. is that the reality on the ground is that it is there is dependency Mm -hmm. and the dependency of the institutions of an incumbency and the institution that runs the election mm -hmm. is something that has been very difficult mm -hmm. because when you have who provides the security of course the monies are always disbursed early enough by by treasury approved by parliament and uh, disbursed by treasury in advance who provides the security that runs the elections mm -hmm. These are, these are issues. Who provides the, the administrative structure that ensures that the elections are well done? Mm -hmm. It is the government of the day. So in cases and in scenarios where you find that the, the incumbent is part of an interest in, and the, in the election, mm -hmm. it becomes pretty a challenge unless we have reached that level of political maturity where we want to believe that, you know, any government that wins it is we accept the government that has won free and fair without influencing mm -hmm. then before we reach that level whenever we will always have elections where incumbencies have political interest mm -hmm. most certainly the political process the electoral process will always be influenced mm -hmm. so we haven't reached that maturity stage but I can assure you that as a country there is there is a level of political maturity that we have gotten into that we also have to appreciate mm -hmm. and the electoral commission must also take advantage of and especially mm -hmm. the civility of the electoral the, the the voters i can tell you this is the only country where we will line in one line going to vote mm -hmm. and the person ahead of you is your political opponent and you guys don't fight in the polling station mm -hmm. I mean that that doesn't happen everywhere so that is again it is again that we must take advantage of and if we 
if you look at sometimes look at how much people line and they are able to endure the long lines over for a very long time since mm -hmm. morning all through to 5 p.m. Yeah. just to put their ballot on their preferred candidate mm -hmm. and then after you do that you go and influence that election in a way that the people didn't want mm -hmm. it augurs not just well for the country yes but even for your conscience mm -hmm. It's not right. Mm -hmm. Because you will just know that there is something wrong you have done. Yes. And you will, you, you will know that you are doing something wrong for your country. So I think we have to admit that, that uh, those issues of duplicity in terms of bringing uh, you know, uh, the, the government of the day, influencing the electoral process by bringing in chiefs, mm -hmm. bringing in the, uh, the national government administration, those things happen. Mm -hmm. And now the county governments are now here. Yes. They also have their officials. They are also likely to bring, on, bring in their people. Mm -hmm. Like it happened in 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 is it in Mumias or, or somewhere yeah. where the county officials were they come they came in and they wanted to influence the election. Mm -hmm. So these are things that unless the electoral institution finds a way of mitigating, mm -hmm. they have they are likely to have an impact in negating some of the gains that we are likely to make or we want to make in in building mm. a better election process indeed uh, let's not shift focus to something that has been brought about by uh, uh, connor said who's just uh, been interviewed he talked about voter education and you bear me witness in 2017 just before the polls uh, a time like now we were having mass voter education we don't have a fully constituted IEBC and that is what, exactly what they are doing now for the interviews are we quite late are we always 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 time bad when it comes to uh, matters polls because we're supposed to have constituted uh, a commission by now we're supposed to have had voter uh, registration and uh, education but we haven't done that yet well well there is uh, this some um, these are some of some things that they can be able to fast track I think that I would uh, I will be very hesitant to say that there is need, the, vo the voter education is, is very urgent. It's not really that urgent, in my opinion. Because as opposed to a referendum, where people really need to know what is contained in referendums and you know the actual things, not just the politics, mm -hmm. but the contents of a referendum document. Mm -hmm. In an electoral process where you have a general election, mm -hmm. you will most likely find that you know the, the politicians do the voter, the voter education yeah. in some way, mm -hmm. because when you are when Saoke is campaigning for presidency, I mean I will have to make Saoke name so big yes. that you don't need voter education to tell a normal, a common voter that you know Saoke is going for presidency. No, mm -hmm. but but what the, the 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 institution needs to focus on now very urgently mm -hmm. is on the system. Mm -hmm. The system that will bring free, fair, and verifiable election. Mm -hmm. Remember, what the court flouted them on in the last general election was not really the free and fair. Mm -hmm. It was the verifiable part. They were not able to verify mm -hmm. what they did what, what they presented. So they need to have a system that, is, that will bring a free, fair, and verifiable election election mm -hmm. and that is what they need to focus on much much more because that is what their mandate is really in the questions around voter education on you know these are things that are secondary you can you they can do it maybe with the with the civil society organizations and mm -hmm. you know they work with the civil civil society organizations unfortunately they are not even doing that as we speak well maybe they are waiting for the commissioners but they mm -hmm. that is something they can fast track mm -hmm. that is something that they can fast track but the system is extremely urgent mm -hmm. because if they don't have a good system then even if the voters are well educated we are likely to go back mm -hmm. yes and and uh, something that you also talked about and was also brought about by one of the interviewees there he said that election matters are always penetrated by other forces how do we ensure that you know it's something that has always come up when we, we talk about polls how do we ensure that the electoral body or agency is not penetrated by agencies cartels or even um, 
uh, interest ahead of the 2022 polls? I think perhaps maybe there is need to it, there is need to look at uh, something that needs a lot of deeper and critical thinking. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe the, some of the interventions that could be used is to find some legal mechanisms of constraining the number of people at any given time who get of who who can be within the polling center at the point of uh, the, 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 the voter tallying mm -hmm. and how to ensure that maybe politicians because you know the idea is that there are, you'll find that there are some parts of the country where maybe because of the the nature of um, a candidate's capacity mm -hmm. they cannot bring their agents so those areas where that are not well manned then the people who have manned who have their agents well represented there are likely to influence the election there mm -hmm. so perhaps maybe it is time the commission could think of um, ensuring that every in every polling station every polling station it becomes mandatory that agents must be there under specific number and there have to be codes of conduct of how these people should should uh, should engage themselves politicians should not be allowed inside there and if they are allowed if they if they force themselves in it becomes a matter of law mm -hmm. so i think it, it becomes a criminal a criminal offense if we are able to find legal ways of curtailing some of these and and uh, some of these behaviors then maybe we can bring some discipline in the process of the counting of the of the votes because that is where the problem lies and mm -hmm. that is where the politicians take advantage of mm -hmm. and you know this telling process and this counting remember it happens in the centers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if it happens in the centers then it means that for you therefore to vie or if you're vying for presidency or you're vying for governor or you're vying for senator you must ensure that your agents are everywhere i can tell you for free that there are polling centers in this country where ballot papers the normal ballot papers not not the extraordinary ones mm -hmm. the genuine ballot papers are actually ticked by those who man the elections the IBC officials themselves. Mm -hmm. So they go into a station and they find, you know, uh, Ben he was a candidate here, mm -hmm. but he has very weak representation here. Mm -hmm. So they look at the opponent, and the opponent has very strong representation, and they are able to give some money. Mm -hmm. So they are, it's trade off. Give us the money, we do the ticking. Mm -hmm. So we will tick mm -hmm. and add about 300 votes in one polling station. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens in another one. Yes. So in the long run, you look at in, you look you see in a constituency, you might find that someone has gotten an additional three thousand votes, and three thousand votes in a constituency is huge. Yes. Yes. So you actually realize that the this whole thing is the it, it, the mess is actually at the grassroots. Mm -hmm. It's really decentralized to the extent that these commissioners must find ways of ensuring that the people on the ground mm -hmm. are taken and have are given responsibility and are bounded by the law yes and uh, st still talking about uh, that kind of mess i remember one of the interviewees is uh, Ruka, i think said that he will strive if at all given the chance will strive to ensure that the the trust and the confidence is back at iebc let's just uh, take a close example the kiamba muguga and the juja in your view do you think they have done a good job to at least gain some trust when it comes to matters polls in, for kenyans i think as is now uh, looking at it structurally, mm -hmm. I would I would say they have. Mm -hmm. Forget about the politics and the noise. Yes. You know the politicians. I told you will always make noise, and yes. they will always want to. Everybody sleep. is there to win. Exactly. They yeah. are always. Everybody is there to win. Mm -hmm. Structurally, I think it is. Mm -hmm. In as much as it was a very tight race, when you look at, for example, uh, the Kiamba, it was an extremely tight race. Yes. And as it's now, they are, I don't, we don't have evidence to justify and prove that there were 
you know, there were some irregularities in the process. Mm -hmm. But if that comes, then we, 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 we can state it as is now, structurally, we can say that, you know, they did it well, mm -hmm. and it was, it was, it was well manned, and uh, of course the politicians will make their noise, and it's, it's expected, and uh, so I think that they did well. Mm -hmm. But it is, it is, um, they should not stop there because, you see, this was just a small election. Mm -hmm. It is much easier to man a small election. And, you know, I can tell you that IBC had no option but to ensure that the process is, and I wouldn't be surprised that those results are the true results of what was in the, what was, what, o o of the voters. Mm -hmm. Maybe, unless... If there were some votes that were that were ticked by the the, the returning officers at mm -hmm. the at the polling centers, you know those ones are difficult to yeah. to to they are they are difficult for the chairman of the IEBC to to know until or even to bring out. Mm -hmm. But they should not keep their guard because they still have a big work. They still have a big responsibility in the, in the, in the general election. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, and I still insist, and I still stress and emphasize, that the problem is in the grassroots. Mm -hmm. That is where the commissioners must focus on. That is where the politicians are finding entry. The pol politicians, and I can tell you, the politicians will not even have interest with the, like in, like in, in, in Kiamba. Mm -hmm. The politicians will not have interest with the constituency returning officer. Yes. They won't. Because all the media is there. They will have interest in the person in charge of the polling station. Mm -hmm. Decentralize and put their monies in the different polling stations. Mm -hmm. That is how they win the elections. Mm -hmm. And ensure that some of the votes that have not been, they take them, and these things happen. Uh, and of course, in a, an election, there has to be a winner and a loser. And if you are aggrieved, you can move to court. And looking at our courts, to be very honest, they are overwhelmed. And when it comes to election matters, I've covered so many petitions at the court. Do you think IBC? should be mandated to sort some of the th uh, some of the petitions and some cases uh, in-house just like the court annexed mediation where you don't really need to go before a judge or a magistrate do you think perhaps they should be given that mandate to, to to actually be able to sort out some of the issues brought about by those who lose well it, it, it's it's a direction that might be um I, I, the, the, you see the question of the, especially the, the candidates who lose mm -hmm. will they be able to feel that you know they are going to be given fair chances unless this is really an ex a really parallel body that is not really affiliated because you see mm -hmm. if it is a body that is affiliated with the with the electoral body then they will also not want to portray mm -hmm. The institution. Uh, the reason why I'm, I'm saying this is because <coughs> looking at um, the, the Muguga one, uh, the, the UDA candidate has said that uh, <laughs> going to court, these are just 17 votes. They said that uh, two or three polling stations perhaps had an issue. This is something that IBC uh, can sort out as opposed to them heading to the court. Yeah, perhaps maybe it could be something they could look at. Mm -hmm. um, they could be something that they could look at, and I think maybe they could give a threshold. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They could give a threshold to the 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 what constitutes the dispute that can go to the the the, the judiciary and that that can go to that that dispute resolution uh, body that that could be established. Because you see, especially in cases where you have the the, the the race too tight mm -hmm. and the uh, two candidates getting very close being in very close race mm -hmm. there is likely hood of the other party feeling that you know I think I won or I think this person stole vote somewhere mm -hmm. so it is important so we will, could we go into a dispute so that we look at these things again and look at the the votes again so there is always that urge mm -hmm. and perhaps maybe it could it could be something they could look at in the hope that it is mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's it will be it will be fair now yeah something else that uh, of course is, uh, doesn't touch on IEBC and of course we're gonna uh, touch some politics when we come back we have seen in developed countries I know we Kenya is 
one of the developing countries but we've seen in developed countries when a party loses a seat perhaps the, the prime minister or other seats uh, the, you find party officials or the, the top leadership resigning and saying that we are not able to lead uh, this party but of course in third world countries uh, <laughs> it's quite a big challenge you're going to be looking at that and also we're going to touch some of the, uh, the alignments that we have seen yesterday we had uh, the, the 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 one kenya alliance announcing some of the uh, things that uh, they intend to do indeed you're watching uh, kbc and this is news check we are looking at some of the things uh, that have been touched when it comes to the iebc commissioners interviews but first let's have a break we'll be right back Welcome back. This is KBC and this is News Check. We are looking at uh, matters polls and you do remember that the IEBC interviews are currently underway. And before we get to the second interviewee of the day, I'm joined by Churchill Saoke, who is a leadership and governance expert and also a lecturer at the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. And Churchill, welcome back. Asante. And before the break, we were looking at uh, <coughs> party leadership. It's something uh, perhaps uh, away from IEBC. We've seen parties uh, decide to change their leadership when perhaps they have a major beating, like what Jubilee has experienced in the last poll. But when we come to third world countries, we just cling on to power. We don't even re-strategize. Don't you think, is this the right time for parties to re-strategize based on what we've seen in the last couple of months? Well, I, I, I think that uh, that is the case in, in some of the developed countries and the developed democracies. And it's because those democracies, democracies have really institutionalized their political systems mm -hmm. to the extent that, you know, the, the party is built based on the ideology. And the ideology has been enrooted into the people mm -hmm. so much so that if at any given point the political party fails to fail in any election, it is because of the failure of the leader and not the failure of the party itself. But when you look at the, developed, the developing countries, it's the contrast in the sense that, you know, we still have political parties that are so inclined to people. And political parties are based on personalities, you know. Y you know, you, you, when, when you go, you go with the party. And when you create another party, you go with everybody whom you had. So it then becomes extremely difficult, the, the, the idea of resigning. Mm -hmm. Because when you, for example, some of the major political parties look at, look at Jubilee and, and maybe ODM and even ANC or Wiper, mm -hmm. assuming the party leader has resigned, what's, what does it mean? Yes, the yes. party is dead. Mm -hmm. It's like the, 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 there is some sort of a political dispensation that has died, not mm -hmm. the party itself. So just the same way when President Kibaki the former president, he got out of the political space, DP sort of died mm -hmm. because he was DP and DP was him. Mm -hmm. So you find that maybe the people who might actually be responsible for, for, for resigning perhaps are maybe the leadership in terms of those who are manning the party at the secretariat level and those who have positions that uh, you know for example if you have the chairman or the secretary general or the organizing secretary those are people who can be either resign or they can be removed through through grassroots elections mm -hmm. so the 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 other thing that brings the question of resigning a challenge is that we are living in in uh, societies where resignation is a sign of uh, fear and weakness and weakness uh -huh. 
So you are always told that you know stick there mm. until they remove you. Uh -huh. So then you find you know for example Jubilee people want the leadership. Yes. You know the chairperson, mm -hmm. uh, the vice second chair gen. and the second gen to yeah. resign. Mm -hmm. But then uh, when they resign what does it mean to them politically? Mm -hmm. It means that you are taking them into oblivion. Are they ready for that? What does it mean to the person who put them there whom they are representing their interest there? So the <coughs> The resignation in the political party in, in our context will much more be dependent on the party leader mm -hmm. and not the person himself. Mm -hmm. So it is the party leader who, for example, will say that, you know what, I think this thing is already hurting my, like the president can say, that I think this thing is already hurting my image, my political image. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? We want to revamp the image, so just step aside. Mm -hmm. And stepping aside means that you know you are not we are not kicking you out. We'll give you something, yes. uh -huh. not in the party, but we'll just want to remove you from the glare of the cameras. But you will be the you could be the person who is pulling the shots on the backspace. Mm -hmm. yeah. And looking at as uh, still on parties, looking at uh, a country like Kenya, I think I believe that the oldest party is Kanu, and it has so been for so many years. There's no party that uh, is more than twenty years old. Uh, in Kenya. Do we only use parties as political vehicles? Because uh, looking at now the, the, the NASA coalition, as I say, is dead. Uh, we're looking at a new uh, OCA, or is the One Kenya Alliance. We also will be having so many as we get closer to the general elections. Are we just using parties as just vehicles to achieve what we want and then uh, we can just dump them as soon as we have something or if we fail to have something? I think that is why we also abolished the party hopping. And, 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 and I, think that, I think that is the issue. Mm -hmm. That is the issue because we are looking at political parties to acquire power mm -hmm. but then I we have to admit that where we are now there is some sort of we are heading to some sort of institutionalization mm -hmm. of political parties mm -hmm. and we have to admit that the office of the registered political parties have really tried mm -hmm. to regulate a party hopping that is one registration of new parties mm -hmm. that is two and uh, trying to reduce the number of parties so that you are able to if you don't like the parties that exist yes. you can go into the politics as an independent candidate mm -hmm. i can tell you right now that you know registering a political party is not easy mm -hmm. it used to be easy before but the laws, you know, the, 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 the registrar of political parties came, brought in laws that have really made it extremely difficult. It's an, a two-stage process mm -hmm. that by the time you finished, you have not just used a lot of money, but you have also spent a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So this somehow has, has also helped to institutionalize some of these, the, the political parties to ensure that we reduce them. Mm -hmm. and try to anchor our ideologies around the existing ones mm -hmm. and and uh, avoid this business of you know just creating political parties at any given time especially towards the election mm -hmm. for purposes of the election and then you drop it off yeah and we've talked about mistrust when it comes to ibc we're also witnessing mistrust when it comes to political parties and why am i saying this is because you do remember anc and other parties they talked about the share from the national government uh nasa you know you are supposed to share this you're supposed to get uh, some money and uh, we you are shortchanged you know there's a lot of mistrust but before then uh, actually let's first of all he he head uh, over to an editors guild uh, meeting that is currently underway right here in the capital Nairobi he said very high standards professional standards he practiced during very trying and difficult period when journalism in Kenya was like a criminal activity. <laughs> Hillary was fearless and focused on serving the country. In order for us to keep the spirit of Hillary alive, we must all dedicate ourselves to protecting our media freedom, whatever it will cost. The documentary, The Making of a Nation, were well researched, the scripts were rich, and the voicing was A1. The video that we watched on Hillary, he talked about the challenges they faced 
resources, staff. Those challenges are still with us in our media houses. Especially now, many media houses are still suffering. Let us all give young people an opportunity. In our media houses, many of us are still holding quality knowledge that we are not transferring to young people. I'm happy Keg has uh, started an award for Hillary, and we should de dedicate more awards to journalists who are leaving the media space today. Hillary, Hillary was a rare breed of journalist who perfected broadcasting and print journalism. It is rare to get such kind of uh, uh, breed in journalism. What do we say? May his spirit live forever and ever. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Uh, we're next going to hear from Nation Media Group. Um, Tuma Matthew. That's uh, uh, one of the commemorations of some of the work that the, the late uh, Hillary journalist, uh, Hillary Ngueno, uh, is actually being mentioned there. And uh, of course, KBC editor in chief Samuel Maina has just left the podium and talking about how uh, Hillary Ngueno's work influenced how so many of us journalists do whatever we do right now. And also talking about uh, Ngueno being one of the instruments mental uh, people when it came to freedom of the press. We'll be getting much of that. Our reporter, Purity Museo, is also uh, on standby and following up on that. In case you just joined us, this is KBC News Check and uh, we are looking at matters, uh, elections and polls and before we crossed over to the editor's guild uh, is that we were talking about financing and sharing of the national cake. When it comes to political parties, Churchill, uh, perhaps you can touch on that. And uh, when it comes to NASA, the, the ANC, I remember the talking about uh, the, 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 the equitable uh, share mm. of uh, the political parties financing by the government. Mm. Talk about there is a lot of mistrust <coughs> when it came to NASA. This is something that, as you said, uh, so many people are using just political parties as vehicles to achieve what they want after an election five years uh, that party is gone 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 mm. how can we ensure that we have more trust when it comes to sharing of these resources because only the big parties will benefit the small ones will always always be crying foul mm. yes i <coughs> i think that it is um, the, the questions that rose especially with that with, with regards to the mistrust on in in the distribution of the money from treasury to the political parties Mm -hmm. is an eye-opener for most of these political parties, I think so, because mm -hmm. for a long time, uh, the, the formations of coalitions and mm -hmm. political formations mm -hmm. have been based on, you know, what positions are we going to get when we, when we, win, the, when we win power, and there has been very little focus on mm -hmm. some of the other structural issues, mm -hmm. like, for example, distribution of resources from government. Mm -hmm. Remember, the law provides for the distribution of the resources as per the number of you know the the the, the, the number of people or the number of MPs or the number of elected officials mm. within the national assembly mm. but then cascading that into the political formations is something that some of these coalitions have never thought about before elections mm. and i think it is now time for these political parties to think of how pre in terms of as they develop their pre-election pacts mm -hmm. they need to embed some of these as part of the agreements mm -hmm. so that it is not just about which positions we are going to we are going to get but also in terms of the the sharing of the resources remember that it will be too much to put trust in politics yes it will be too much mm -hmm. to to know to to put to to put trust in politics because the dynamism of politics is is is, is very high you know like for example we might like you look at the case scenario of nasa they went into the election mm -hmm. and the pact was based on the fact that they were going to win what about if they never won was there 
were their options. Mm -hmm. If we don't win, what what will we go for? What will we do? And that's now what happens. That when they didn't win, then it was now everybody for himself. Mm -hmm. So then trust there was only trust there was only relevant in as long as we were. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in as long as we won. <laughs> <laughs> Giving the scenario of uh, the, the, the politicians being like a bunch of banana where uh, all of them are just uh, clinging on something. Some are crooked, some are straight, some have started to ripen. Exactly. Others. Uh, but uh, still on the same, looking at the, the, the realignments that we are currently seeing, uh, we've seen uh, the, 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 the One Kenya Alliance and of course we've seen uh, uh, Jubilee warming up to ODM. What kind of scenario are we looking at now, uh, just a year to the general polls yes they are they are, of course they are still right right now the formations is still early to tell because mm -hmm. some of these some of these uh, uh, political parties are still playing hard to get for each other mm -hmm. they are raising the stakes so that they increase the amount of in case that uh, you know some some candidate need to be bought yes. you got to increase your price mm -hmm. and you increase your price by playing hard to get so, mm -hmm. so <laughs> <laughs> some yeah. of some of the parties or some of the candidates are not really into these to the long run interest at the end of the day yes they're mm -hmm. interested they're 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 building their interest they're building their stake they're they're increasing their their price for the highest bidder mm -hmm. and most likely as towards maybe uh, the towards the end of this year or from from september or october going onwards is when we are likely to see people really getting into structured formations mm -hmm. where now you begin to see of course already as of now you can see loose associations mm -hmm. the only challenge when you look at some of those uh, some of the uh, the formations like uh, okoa kenya is that the the presidential candidate if they are to go as an alliance is not yet known mm -hmm. and so as to the question of how to settle on one will be very difficult mm -hmm. and will involve a lot of negotiations yes others like you know uda it is you know it is mm -hmm. it is something that is already known mm -hmm. and if for example core kenya is to go into a political formation with uda mm -hmm. then it is obvious that the the, the deputy president will mm -hmm. be the presidential candidate mm -hmm. so okoa kenya will give a running mate mm -hmm. if okoa kenya goes into goes back and you know the the odm and the other nasa affiliates mm -hmm. they decide to rejoin up together mm -hmm. and the the odm leader is in the is in the is part of the is interested in the race mm -hmm. then most likely he is likely to to be the presidential flag bearer so those formations are still are still um they are baby steps. They are still baby steps. Mm -hmm. The key thing now mm -hmm. to look at is the entry in the Mount Kenya region. Mm -hmm. I think there is a lot of interest there. Yes. And uh, you know there are a lot of kingpins and political figures coming up and king and, and just people wanting to sway in and use use at least mm -hmm. a pinch of you know like you know Mangeria says you know let me just use a pinch of my voters yes. to negotiate for something up Mukiraitu mm Murungi -hmm. or 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 maybe the speaker, speaker of the national yeah. assembly also says let me just try and get entry and get a pinch of the votes and use it to negotiate for something mm -hmm. up there so the in the ultimate end mm -hmm. <coughs> you might realize that all these people they are more interested in building formidable forces for negotiations and getting their interests mm -hmm. in and they're not into this to the long run mm -hmm. yes of course we've seen a lot of interest as you <coughs> said in the mount kenya region uh, more than other regions in the recent past and of course they forget that uh, the head of state will not be contesting in the 2022 general polls but away from that because i'm quite sure we'll be heading back to the uh, iebc interviews let's look at something uh, the, the the iebc chair wafula chabukati said during the elections at muguga and kamba he talked about uh, they are looking into i think there's something that uh, didn't see a lot of light but he talked about they are seeking ways to protect their own officers. We've seen them being hurled to the ground. We've seen them being slapped. We've seen them being bad, bad mouth. Um, and he talked about they are looking into ways to protect them 
But I think this is something that we should have done. We should have done a long time ago when it comes to IABC officials. And exactly. And I think that is, that is where it lies. It's very important to protect the, 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 the election officials. Mm. <coughs> because it is only in protecting them that they will not be able to be gullible mm -hmm. to threats and intimidation by the politicians and high-level uh, officials. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in any in any cadre. Mm -hmm. And it, it, is, it is something that should have happened yesterday. It is something that should have, be, because, because the moment you have people who know they are protected, then they will be able to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So you give me responsibility and tell me that, you know what, so okay, I am giving you the responsibility to man the polling station in this particular place. Mm -hmm. And I am protecting you. Ensure you deliver as per the law. Mm -hmm. If there are any irregularities that come as a result, that come after the polls from your polling station, mm -hmm. you will be criminally responsible. Mm -hmm. In that case, you will take responsibility. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think when we cascade it like that and, you know, just protect them and give them the responsibility and tell them that they are bearing the overall responsibility of the irregularity, then they will take charge and do what it takes mm -hmm. to give a credible election. Right now, we just want four commissioners, that is one gentleman and three ladies in the interviews, and we are faced by the 2027 dilemma, if you ask me. Why is this? Because their term is currently, what, six years. The next six years, we'll be looking for other commissioners and still preparing for the 2027 20, general polls. Perhaps we should change their term or we should extend it or what exactly should be done because we will be on the same same spot when it comes to 2027 20, general polls. Yes, I think that is something that needs to be looked at strategically. Perhaps they could relook at maybe some giving bringing on board some miscellaneous amendments mm -hmm. so that that need so that that can be solved because you see whenever you are, you, you have scenarios where electoral electoral officials are being being interviewed just few months or just a year into the election then you do not give them ample time to prepare mm -hmm. so I think in terms of foresight in terms of strategy mm -hmm. this is something that needs to be there in their in their strategic plan and need to be embedded in the legal instruments mm -hmm. so that the by the time an election is by the time they are preparing for an election there are people who have been on in the office for enough time to prepare for that election otherwise you might get into scenarios where you know some of the officials will say that you know what we got into office one year and we found all systems already there there's nothing we could do mm -hmm. yeah. and and still on the same they will be uh, according to Krigler report i think it was 2013 yeah you talked about at least a year yeah everything should be up and running yes. Because election is a cycle. So after the 2020, uh, 2013 general polls, we're supposed to, t to, to start preparing for 2027 and 2022. And after 2022, we're supposed to be preparing for 2027. He talked about at least a year. Yes. And looking at the timelines that we have, 2013 and uh, 2021 is around eight years. Nothing has been it's, done. We are still, still, still on the same timeline again. So it's, it's something that really needs to be critically looked at mm -hmm. <coughs> because it is, it is a key, it is a key, uh, it's, it's very key in ensuring that uh, the, the elections will be free and the preparation of the, the commission is, is good enough. <coughs> but then again, also, you know, in the, when you look at uh, the political space, and I think that this is sometimes where, where political interest and parliament uh, uh, <laughs> messes up. You know, mm -hmm. the, they just come in and, you know, if they are annoyed with something, they sweep the whole commission without thinking of some of these things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've heard of scenarios where a whole commission was, you know, a new law came in and a whole commission was swept out. Mm -hmm. Like what happened to I, was it uh, ECK? E yeah. Then later on, I E I I C. Yeah. I mean, I E C. Interim Independent yes. Electoral Commission. Yes. I I E C. Yeah. Yes. So I, I don't know. You never know. Twenty twenty seven is too far. <laughs> Maybe something might happen that <laughs> they might be swept again. But we are not projecting. Mm -hmm. I think what we are emphasizing is that in their strategic plan as a commission, they need to 
look at scenarios where the commission is always there early in advance mm -hmm. to ensure that they in any come upcoming election the the commission is well set and ready mm -hmm. so that needed to be there in the strategic plan it needs to be embedded within their legal instruments and that maybe should be passed by parliament indeed and of course we will be <coughs> hearing a lot from the ncic <coughs> the national uh, commission mandated um, checking matters uh, hate speech and i remember a couple of months ago they talked about they will be working with other agencies including the dci the eacc uh, to actually before uh, to more or less like vet someone before you are actually cleared to contest and a lot of people have talked about ncic having just the barking but not the, the no not the biting looking at iabc some have argued, argued rather have argued that iabc has enough laws enough legislation they just need to implement them others have argued that man this iabc needs to be given more power even prosecution power to prosecute some of the things that we have seen happen during elections what's your take on that <coughs> well you know i th i think that the the laws the laws are there mm -hmm. we have to admit that the laws are there uh, maybe the question as to putting the uh, putting the law in practice we also have to float them that they have not been able to do that because i think apart from in my thinking when i look at ibc structurally and as an institution forget about the commissioners forget about the ceo uh, i would have expected a little much more mm -hmm. in terms of dissecting the commission from the perspective of what role do the small guys the clerks contribute in electoral irregularities and how can this be stopped i think i think when we cascade this mm -hmm. then we we don't get too much into the aura of you know wanting just to dismiss the chairman and dismiss the the the, the, the ceo mm -hmm we get deep into where the problem lies and if the commission comes and do dissecting of the commission well enough and see where the problem lies mm -hmm. then they will realize that they're just victims of circumstances they're just victims of circumstances you are mm -hmm. given documents to read documents that you can't verify and you can't verify them because you did not take leadership in ensuring that the people who give you these documents mm -hmm. are people who you can trust they are people who have got credence so this is the process that i think mm -hmm. what you are saying makes sense mm -hmm. that they have laws that they have not used mm -hmm. they have they have laws that they have not used to make their people mm -hmm. ensure that they deliver in other words you're saying fair, that fair iebc process. after perhaps uh, fully being fully constituted they should first of all carry an audit of their staff and uh, of course the the electoral process in-house before we get to the 2022 polls that is my very firm and strong belief mm -hmm. it's my very firm and strong belief because there are some elements as well there are elements within commission mm -hmm. they know how it is done best mm -hmm and they know how it can be done best so the leadership's responsibility is to ensure that they do proper talent search and give proper codes of conduct that are criminally binding so that you know that when i am being recruited to become any official in a polling a polling uh, in a in a, an electoral process mm -hmm. i know that this is a matter of this is me and the law the responsibility of the commissioners is to ensure that they provide the necessary environment the security mm -hmm. the electoral materials and every other thing and ensure that the the polling station and the telling center are well guarded and i am safe the rest is your responsibility indeed and let's get to the figures now during the muguga and the kiamba and the juja one uh, there were allegations of a lot of money was spent yeah 
and uh, politicians just uh, telling their their supporters you go eat the money and then you know who to vote and of course there are, there's a law uh, that allows for the money that you can spend uh, during uh, an election but we are not seeing that happen and of course we have the law as you said we have the laws but the implementation has become quite well, a big challenge well that is that is implementing that law is not easy mm -hmm. because in the case in the case of uh, in the case of politicians you know there is there is no way you can hold that politician accountable to obeying that law mm -hmm. because assuming that you have already approved me as a candidate mm -hmm. for juja by election and i'm already in the ballot and uh, you cannot prove the amount of money I have. You neither can you even prove the amount of money I'll spend. Mm -hmm. Because I, the amount of money that will come from me will just be within the, within the required uh, threshold. Mm -hmm. But the ones that will come away from me are beyond. So it is very difficult to determine and implement that law as per the letter. It is a, it is a law that can only be implemented in spirit, mm -hmm. not in letter. Otherwise, it is very difficult. It is extremely, extremely difficult. Unless, if I am a politician, I say that, you know what? The law says I can't use 10 million. And that is the amount of money I'm going to use. It's your heart that will convince you. Mm -hmm. if, your heart is, if your heart and mind are different, I am telling you, you will find different ways of, <laughs> of implementing the law. Mm -hmm. Yes. National Coalition and Integration Commission <laughs> Um, in the uh, revisit that interview again, they talked about working with other agencies <coughs> to ensure that uh, before somebody is cleared, of course, it's somebody of integrity. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking at some of the leaders we have, without mentioning name, we can see that some even have cases in court. In other countries, that never happens. Uh, we are seeing some who have. Uh, actually talked about 2022 i'll be on the poll they not only have cases they have been charged in court and uh, some even have spent time in jail but we will see them back at the ballot i i think that that is a law that has that is a law that is very much possible to implement mm -hmm. and i think that is where ncic has become a toothless dog mm -hmm. because if someone has been named and has been seen inciting Kenyans against Kenyans. Mm -hmm. These are things that you will find within media and uh, with the decentralized media, with, the, with even social media platforms. Mm -hmm. These things that are, are now things that exist and you can get as much information as possible. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is up to the commission to ensure that those who have been implicated in hate speech are not allowed to vie. So this is something that it's very possible to implement. Just the same way the, you know, the, the, the EEC, I mean the, the, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission has given some threshold as per chapter 6 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So I think that it is about giving threshold to what is hate speech, mm -hmm. determining what is hate speech, and this will actually make politicians and curtail them from reckless talk. Mm -hmm. Because they know when they just give reckless talk, it is going to have political impact in terms of them not getting into elections. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking of uh, civic education, uh, we, something we, have, we had touched a little bit, but um, there are some aspects that we didn't really look at because we have seen civic education before each and every election. Uh, but we always... Um, we always land into problems when it comes to matters election. Of course, cases of uh, uh, voter mal practices are there, uh, stealing of votes, violence. But this is something that uh, should be done before even we head to the polls. We know that if you are convicted or even you're charged in any electoral malpractices, it should be something quite severe so that we may not replicate the cycle each and every time we have general elections. Absolutely. And and then the other thing that the other thing other than about that is that you find in terms of civic education, other than just the you know how to undertake the election mm -hmm. and how to how to undertake the election and how to do you know the voting process, how to do the taking, mm -hmm. I think that there is an entry point where the commission for the NCSC NCSC could come in mm -hmm. in voter in, in voter education. Mm -hmm. 
they could come in to educate people on how who not to vote especially those who have engaged in hate speech because you see there are instances how when there are some politicians who have been able to sway mm -hmm. voters not to elect specific people on the basis of incitement mm -hmm. so if that has happened then it means that it is possible to have the government agencies just use proper stakeholders to also sway the voting pattern without necessarily being personal or individual mm -hmm. objectively mm -hmm. that you know what if this particular person or if this kind of or if any candidate tries to speak this or speak this or speak this or speak this mm -hmm. know that he she will not be accepted mm -hmm. in the election so don't even try to vote him or her mm -hmm. in the nominations in that case you will be strategically stigmatizing hate speech and i think these are the kind of things that ncsc should do mm -hmm. instead of just talking and telling us things on hate, sp hate speech in the media mm -hmm. which people even don't know mm -hmm. and also looking at uh, uh, the, the you've talked about of course uh, registering voters the mass voter registration exercise which uh, by, la by the last election, ex that is exactly what was happening right now, uh, or just slightly mm -hmm. a year to the 2017 general polls. Mm -hmm. And somebody suggested, actually so one of the interviews suggested that it should be uh, when somebody is applying for a national identity card or Huduma card this time around, he, he or she has the opportunity to register as a voter then as opposed to where you just get the id and wait for when we are registering as voters or you going ahead and uh, registering as a voter do you think that perhaps can help when it comes to voter registration to ease the exercise and we're gonna save if you ask me yes it, it is something that could ease uh, it could ease it especially if the uh, if the electoral system is institutionalized and I say institutionalized because when you look at the trends of the mass registrations, they have always been based on, they have always come after an overhaul of the electoral body. You know, mm -hmm. when, I, when, I, when ECK was overhauled yes. and IIEC came in, IIEC had to do a mass registration. Mm -hmm. When IIEC was overhauled and IEBC BC. came in, yes. IEBC had to do a mass registration mm -hmm. because they believed that the people did not have trust in the system mm -hmm. and that the system had already been infiltrated. So if the system of electoral system has been institutionalized and the institutionalization has trust of the public, mm -hmm. then some of these things will be, will be very easy to do. In mm -hmm. fact, it will even be easy to register a voter not just even at the point of not just at the point when he is uh, when he is doing his uh, when he's, he wants his huduma mm -hmm. but even at the point when he's when he's registering for his national id or even other registration of government mm -hmm. yes so it will be cascaded there are many ways in which it can be cascaded mm -hmm. and government bureaucracy has got so many ways of cascading it down or helping IBC to cascade it down mm -hmm. as long as the system is one that people already believe in and the people know that you know what I am doing this because I know it's going to IBC not elsewhere yes and IBC has been on the receiving end and of course we expect them uh, to put their house in order before we go to the 2022 general elections we've talked about NCIC and uh, of course all other agencies but we have left out the voter what is the role should be the role of the voter what should <coughs> the voter know each and every time before he or she goes to the polls his or her own responsibility to ensure mm -hmm. that we have credible elections mm -hmm. each and every time mm -hmm. and we don't have any violent mm -hmm. cycle that mm -hmm. we have experienced mm -hmm. over the years yes B before i come to the vote i think let mm -hmm. me just emphasize the fact that mm -hmm. we the reason why we put ibc on the receiving end is because not because they're doing something wrong but because they can do something better mm -hmm. we're just trying to make them mm -hmm. to become the best to build the best democracy build the best democracy in kenya yes on to the voter it is i think it i think the voter has a big responsibility mm -hmm. a huge responsibility in fact because they are the very reason why we are speaking all these things 
the voter has a responsibility of ensuring that they choose the right person. That mm -hmm. is the first thing. Mm -hmm. They have a responsibility to ensure that they choose the right leader that will lead this country, mm -hmm. irrespective of every other thing. Mm -hmm. They need to look at the key qualities the, of the people who is best fit to lead this nation. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that the voter is someone is, is should be able to do this thinking beyond their ethnicity and their race and their religion. This is the big responsibility of the voter. Mm -hmm. And the politicians will try to, in any direction, they will try to put the voter in pol ethnic cocoons, they will try to put the voter in, in religious cocoons, they will try to put the voter in regional cocoons. Mm -hmm. These are things that, these are strategies that politicians use and you can't stop them. But it is the responsibility of the voter to say no. Indeed. That is the first thing. The, first and the second and the last is the responsibility of the voter to ensure that the electoral process is devoid of election, uh, violence, as you have said. Yes. That if a young person is being wooed into ensuring that he's going to tamper with the telling process, mm -hmm. he will say, no, this is going to put my country in bad light. Indeed. That responsibility is with the voter. Indeed. Yes. Let's all work together to ensure that we have credible polls and each and every election cycle. We do not even polarize the economy as is the usual trend. We are now crossing over to the IEBC in interviews are currently underway the elizabeth muli led commission is on the second candidate of the day my name is ben troy thank you so much churchill for making time and thank then uh, of course we will be looking at more of this as the interviews come to a close let's cross over